Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have some historical romances to recommend to y'all. I know that 2023 was definitely not the year for historical romance reading for a lot of people, myself included, as well as my friends. We've talked about it before. And I know a lot of us really want to read more historicals in 2024. I have a few recommendations for historical, specifically historical series. And I have one for historicals with disability representation. So I'll link those down below if you want even more recommendations. But I'm just going to be recommending 10 historicals that I really love that I want other people to read as well. <laughs> um, so I have talked about probably a lot of these books a few times on my channel. But this is just one video where I get to collect all of them as one um, specifically with historicals so um, I'm hopefully going to be reading historicals that I can add to this list so let's get into these 10 books the first one that I have is a fan favorite this is My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed this one's about Kitty Danvers and um, she is a little bit in a bind because she is the eldest sister and in this day and age kind of like the younger sisters couldn't go out into society unless the eldest one was either engaged, married, being courted, you know, like already had something lined up um, because like the other girls can't be with somebody unless the oldest one is already off. And she already knows that she's not gonna marry. She already knows that. Like no one wants her, she's not gonna get married. So she starts this rumor that she's actually engaged to this Duke that's never seen society. She's like, this guy is never gonna find out. He never goes to balls. No one knows where he is. No one's seen him for years. Like no one's gonna find out. And so everyone thinks that she's engaged to this guy so her sisters can go and find husbands. She wants the best for her sisters. So she basically claims that she's engaged to this guy, right? And then one day at a ball, guess who shows up? But said Duke and he pulls her aside and he's like, why are you telling people that we're engaged? Like, I don't know you. And she's like, so apologetic. She's like, I'm so sorry. I will end the rumor. I just wanted, a better life for my sisters. I'm so sorry. I never meant to like drag you into this. Um, but then he thinks about it and he's like, how about we continue on with this ruse because I have certain reasons why I would like to continue on fake being engaged to you. So that's this romance. It has awesome disability representation. Our hero is actually a wheelchair user. He was in an accident and um, was told by his doctors that he'd like never walk again. Um, so there's like an exploration with that in here so I love this one there's an awesome like stuck in a cabin one bed scene in this book it's so good it's one of my favorites it's a fan favorite in the historical romance like community for a reason it's so good while we're talking about Stacey Reed I thought I'd recommend kind of like an under hyped one that I actually really enjoyed I think it's on Kindle Unlimited I did listen to it as an audio there is an audio for it um, but this is Duchess by Day Mistress by Night it's the first book in her rebellious desire series the heroine of the story is a widowed mother she's a single mother now and she was married to a duke and she didn't really have a lot of passion with her husband and then one day she meets this self-made man people don't really like him because he's not from wealth he made his wealth by collecting secrets and kind of like ious from people in society. The heroine's son goes missing and she is like distraught and she goes up to this man and is like, I will do anything. I will owe you anything. Please find my son. I cannot find him. I think someone took him. So his IOU or his payment that he would like from her is um, a night of passion with her in exchange. <laughs> and um, man, that does that passion turn into many days of passion. I really love this one and I really want more people to read it. It's really under hype, it's really good. It's a great single mom romance. And this hero is like delicious. He is so delicious. And the class difference, a part of this book definitely comes into play. And I love that too, because normally you read about books where the hero is of higher rank than the heroine, but it's flipped where the heroine's of higher rank than him. And I love the take that Stacey Reed had in this book. Ooh, one of my favorites, A Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup. I love this book so much, specifically because of the representation in this book. Our heroine has anxiety. Her family is from Britain and they've wasted all of their money. They've wasted all their money. And the only way that her parents are horrible, by the way, the only way they can think to earn more money is to basically sell off their daughter to the highest bidder. So they travel to America and they're gonna stay in the heroine's aunt's house who lives in America and um they're gonna basically sell her off to this very old man like so old man looks cruel sounds cruel and she is so upset but before she finds out about this she meets the hero who's next door lives next door to her aunt she's just wandering in the gardens finds peace in the gardens because she has like social anxiety she was very overwhelmed by all the people in the house 
And then she comes across our hero who's like, why are you in my garden? And they actually become friends. Um, the hero very reluctantly becomes her friend. He's he's very much a recluse, doesn't really like people. He's been burned too many times by humans, okay? He has his dog that he's very happy with um, because the hero is actually deaf and he has received a lot of ridicule in his life because he's hearing impaired. But then the hero hears about her debacle with having to marry this gross old man. And he's like, you know what? I'll marry you, let's do it. So <laughs> they get married. I don't wanna spoil the rest um, of this book, but it's really cool too, because the hero, it's kind of like an inventor and is trying to invent like the first hearing aid, if you will. I really love this one and I need more people to read it. It's so good. I haven't read any of the other books in the series, by the way. It's the third book in her, the 400 series, but I haven't read any of the other ones. So you can read this one as a standalone if you would like to, because I was fine. Um, but I definitely want to go back and read the other ones in the series for sure. Oh, one of my favorites is so underhyped. I need more people to read it. This is How to Capture a Countess by Karen Hawkins. This book starts out a few years ago, like before the book actually takes place. It like, it's kind of like this moment where it's like flashback scene to years ago, but the hero and the heroine first meet, they meet at a ball and they have this very like banter filled conversation. But the conversation ends with the heroine pushing the hero into a fountain <laughs> and the whole ton sees, like everyone sees, and he kind of becomes like a laughing stock for a few days. <laughs> and he is so upset. He's like, who is that woman who pushed me into a fountain? I need justice. I need to find out who this woman is and she's paying. He spends years trying to track this woman down and he can't find her. And when he finally does, he's like, okay, you're going to fix this because I'm still known as the fountain guy. And I hate that. So, um, you're going to marry me. It's going to You're marrying me. <laughs> so that's all I want to leave you with. That's the beginning of this. Um, but I love this one so much. I need more people to read it. This series as a whole is so underhyped. For My Lady's Kiss by Linda Needham was one that I think I read last year and it was so fun. Um, it was the first historical that I read in so long that I read physically because there is no audiobook for this book. This one's about McKenna and she's kind of like in the town mother role if you will. She kind of like runs the town without without the label because the person who um, like lived in the castle that owned the parish like left. So she's trying to help everyone. McKenna has also been like pushed by her brothers. She has multiple brothers. She, they're like, you need to get married. Like it needs to happen now. It's very overdue. You need to get married. So she's like, you know what? This is how I'm gonna find my husband. She's gonna like play around with her brothers, but she's joking me doing this. She's not actually gonna fall through with this. This book starts out with her blindfolding herself and having all the guys in the village like stand in a circle around her where she's in the center. Whoever she touches, like when she's walking around the circle, whoever she touches is gonna be her husband. She's gonna marry him. She's not actually gonna do it, but <laughs> she's like trying to like play around with her brothers, right? The guy that she touches, she does not know him. She's like, who are you? Turns out that's the new kind of like ruler or guy who's been sent by the king to control this village, get it under control, take care of it essentially. She's like, -uh, this is my home. You're not gonna come in here and ruin everything that we built, not happening. Um, and this hero, Huh, he is so <laughs> funny to me um, because he is so sick of this woman. She's so meddlesome. She wants to ruin all of the plans that he has for this village because she's adamant that he does not know what is best for them and her people. There comes a point where she's just like committed like too many pranks on him. So he decides to kidnap her and put her in the castle that he like lives in now on the in the village area and kidnaps her, locks her in his room with him and like makes her sleep in the bed with him and like sleeps with her hair in a fist, tosses her clothes out the window so she can't run away because she's like, he's like, she never run away if she doesn't have clothes, right? Little does he know, okay? Um, so he sleeps with like her hair in his fist so he can like feel if she moves, right? It's so funny to me. I love this one so much. It like just put a huge smile on my face. I of course have to recommend Mind Till Midnight by Lisa Kleypas, the first book in the Hathaway series. Um, this is the first book that I have that has a step back, so I thought I'd show it off for you. This one's about Amelia Hathaway, the eldest Hathaway sister and her romance with Cam Rohan, who is a Romani man, who's kind of like known as scandalous in the ton, if you will. Amelia is like denying her feelings for this man throughout a lot of this book, but they just can't keep their hands off of each other. Like they, the way they fall in love in here, beautiful. Another first book in a series is Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. Um, this is the first book in the Castles Ever After series. This is a series about heroines inheriting castles, which is really fun. So the heroine walks into this castle that she thinks she's inherited, but this man like scares her half to death because 
like it's like dark everywhere and he pops out of nowhere and he's like what are you doing in my home and she's like what are you talking about this is my home now it's a castle but um no <laughs> this guy is a duke and he lives in this castle he's like this is my home no this is mine and so the two of them are trying to figure out who actually owns this castle and they end up falling in love the hero is actually blind he went off to war and became blind because I think of some shrapnel that hit him, I wanna say. I love the like quirkiness of this book as well because there are side characters that are so fun. And I also just love obviously the disability representation and um, Tessa Dare's writing is so good. Like I was so sucked into this book. So if you've not read this one in this whole series yet, you need to. If you want a little novella, Okay, a little novella. There's actually an audiobook for this, by the way. This is The Scandalous, Dissolute, No Good, Mr. Right by Tessa Dare. It's so short, but it is so fun. This one's about Eliza, and she is the youngest sister in her family. She has three older sisters. And like I said earlier with my darling Duke, she's not allowed to be out into society until all of her sisters are wed. So um, she's kind of like stuck and can't really go out to society or mingle with men. But then this book takes place, this novella takes place in like different time jumps, like once a year, she ends up bumping into this guy named Harry Wright. And the banter between these two, chef's kiss, fantastic. I love them so much. And they haven't seen each other in like a while right every time there's like a little time jump they're like oh i haven't seen you in like months or oh i haven't seen you in like a year but it feels like they like no time has passed like the way that they talk to each other and banter and bicker it is so fun like this book had me cheesing 100 next i have it takes two to tumble by cat sebastian if you want an mm version of the sound of music but with no singing pick this up it starts out with one of our heroes who is a vicar and he is new to town and he finds out through like the other people in the village like there's this very rambunctious group of children in this family and they kind of wreak havoc in the village and he's like okay let me go see what's going on turns out um their father is off at sea he's a sailor and they haven't seen him in a while and all their governesses keep quitting keep quitting there's so much work and so he's like you know what i think i'm just gonna take care of these kids until their dad comes home because like they're causing a lot of trouble with this in this village okay and so that's kind of like where the sound of music aspect like comes in and then their dad comes back home mother's not in the picture by the way um she has passed uh i think when one of the kids was very young the sailor comes back and um is a little bit upset he's like what is this vicar doing in my house and it's the romance between him and the vicar so it's really good it definitely gave me sound of music vibes but of course without the singing <laughs> and the last one that i have is the duke i tempted by scarlet pekka this is probably the hottest book on this list if you want like a high steam historical read this is one to pick up our hero is a duke and i think he's widowed or his mistress died i can't remember off the top of my head but he has experienced a lot of loss recently and he is very broody and grumpy because of it so our heroine of this book she is a botanist um and she loves plants and flowers and stuff she's been, actually been hired by the hero's sister to create like this beautiful foliage in the ballroom that she's gonna have a ball in and long story short the duke and this heroine get in a compromising position and the two have to get married and the hero is pissed the heroine is pissed they both don't want to be married especially to each other because they don't really care for the other person and that's all i really want to leave you with but this book is hot but it definitely has its emotional moments at the same time anyways there you have it those are some historical romance recommendations for you let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any flower emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.